Well, Republican Senator Mike Crapo of Idaho is no stranger to budget negotiations. As a member of the bipartisan Gang of Six, Crapo is urging members of the Deadlock Super Committee to go big on their plans to reduce the deficit. Senator is kind enough to join us now in studio today. Thank you for coming in. Good to be with you, Shannon. All right, so you're urging go big. You're something more in the neighborhood of $4 trillion in cuts, but it sounds like this group is almost given up on even getting to the bare minimum of $1.2 trillion in cuts. What do you think is going to happen? Well, it appears from what we are seeing that there will not be an agreement in time. Uh, but that does not mean that the debt ceiling agreement will not be met. In other words, there is a sequestration that will generate about $1.2 trillion in additional savings. It's just going to be really messy. What, and what do you make of the, of the talk from, from some on Capitol Hill that they want to go around sequestration, what you've already agreed to as far as cuts? Uh, you know, the average American out there thought that's the motivation for getting to bigger cuts and to better agreement. Um, if you can just go around it, what was the point of having it at all? Well, first of all, I don't think that Congress will be able to go around it. Uh, there may be an ability to adjust it, meaning uh, fine-tune the impact of the sequestration. I'm not even sure that that will work. But the bottom line is that one way or the other, the sequestration amount of $1.2 trillion will be achieved. All right. There are a lot of groups that have been working sort of behind the scenes or in a parallel fashion in case the committee doesn't get it done to do something else. Tell me about what's going on with the Gang of Six. Do you have a plan waiting in the wings? Yes. As you know, we were able to put together a bipartisan plan, and it was a big plan, $4 trillion. And that's not just a number that we picked out of the air. You have to hit at least $4 trillion in order to keep America's head above water, breathing oxygen, uh, rather than going under. And so regardless of how this deal works out, uh, we've got to continue working, and we're building that. We now have about 45 senators and over 100 House members who have agreed to the target of $4 trillion and who are ready to make the compromises necessary to get there. Uh, but we've, we've just got to keep working. And, and frankly, America is coming together to recognize that Congress needs to put aside the, bipart or the partisanship and uh, move forward. We don't have time for gridlock any longer. Okay, if the Super Committee doesn't get it done by Wednesday, how quickly could the Gang of Six plan be put into legislative form or, or offered up in some way that it could be available to lawmakers to consider and maybe even vote on? Well, the Gang of Six plan is very close to a position where it could be put together. Frankly, there are a number of other proposals that could be put together as well, like the Bull simpson Commission report or the Domenici rivlin report and others. And so it's not that we don't have the understanding of what to do and how to do it. We could put the plans together. It's building the, the bipartisan consensus in order to move forward. And there are a couple of sticking points. Let's talk first about what Senator Kerry had to say there, one of your colleagues. Uh, he said basically that it's all about Republicans not being willing to give up tax cuts for the wealthiest top earners. Uh, fact or fiction? Well, you know, I have to disagree with Senator Kerry on that one. The Republicans did put forward tax revenue increase proposals with regard to the Super Committee, and they did focus them on the highest income brackets. Uh, the battle that Senator Kerry seemed to be mentioning there is whether, whether to keep the Bush tax policies in place. But remember that the Bull simpson Commission, the Gang of Six, and frankly, every group that has analyzed this has said that we need to reform our tax code. And the kind of dynamic tax reform would basically eliminate the Bush tax cuts and, frankly, all sorts of other parts of the tax code in place and, and replace it with a very powerful new dynamic code. And that's the battle that we're, we're facing. So you're saying Republicans are offering a form of increased revenues. It's maybe just not in the format or the way that Democrats want, because something that Charles Krauthammer pointed out earlier in the week, last week, and said uh, it's as if they won't take yes for an answer, because you are offering revenue increases, but it's not in the way they want to see it done. Yeah, that's exactly right. What, what the Republicans are proposing, like I say, as has been proposed by the commissions and others that have analyzed it, is to reform the tax code and in the process of reforming it, generate that additional revenue that the Democrats are demanding and generate it from the higher income categories, but do so in a way that makes our tax code much more simple, lowers the, broadens the base and lowers the rates, and then actually generates a powerful growth in, in revenue for the, the entire country. All right, Senator Crapo, thank you very much for your time. We'll see how this plays out this week and whether the Gang of Six is back in business. Thank you. Thanks.